alguien que tú pensaste que fue tu amigo nunca fue tu amigo y te acaba de traicionar. Someone who you thought was your friend was never your friend and he already betrayed you. I can see him from two cameras, like close. And so they were like out on the street. There's something ain't right with these two motherfuckers in that car. Corner of my eye, I could tell they were straight looking at me. Like I just seen a truck out of nowhere, just like coming straight at me, like, and it hits the gate, knocks the gate off the rail. And then I just, when I jump out the way, all of a sudden I feel like someone tackles me. Boom! And I just see all these guns come out and they're like all over my face, my head. No te muevas, hijo de puta madre. Honestly, right there when they got me, I thought it was my enemies and I was about to die. That motherfucker's gonna chop me up, melt me, do some shit to me. They took the thing up off my head. And then I seen like a packet on the floor, like a packet of paperwork. And like, you know, they're stepping on it and all this shit, all this movement, the truck's moving around. And and then I see, and I see my picture right there. You know, and then that's when they just hit me with like, what's up, rabbit? What's good? Basically, I got, I got snatched up by the pepos. Basically, that's la policía estatal preventiva. They want, they want the cover and shit, and then... Then after that, you know, they, after they called me by my name, they basically, you know, they just started being cool and being, telling me some shit like, hey, you know what, they're just, we're just doing our job, you know? And that's when they start telling me, he's like, yeah, you know what? He's like, look, we're not gonna tell you who it is, you know, because we can't, but someone from over here gave the tip, saying like someone from TJ. Gave, gave the info to the FBI. FBI came, watched me for like two months, and after they had all my shit scoped out, they, they put the folder on the state police's desk and was like, come on, bring them in. That's what they said. They gave me a bit more info on the person that did this, but I ain't gonna put that shit out there. And um, so I, like basically, we knew who it was, you know? Because in reality, like, nobody knew where I lived. Like, I never took nobody to my house. And and that's some shit, you know, that I learned from the, from the paisas that they don't ever take nobody to their house because in the end, you never know what's going to happen. And shit might pop off, and that's right there where they're going to get you. And that, that's for anyone in the motherfucking world. It was just nights when I thought my enemies would get to me. And I think, like, like, like I don't give a fuck how, how hard you think you are. But you don't know fear until you, you've had a squad, like a SWAT team come and get you. Not to arrest you, but to come and kill you. You know, squads like that, squads of killers, like you, you don't know fear, you don't know. Before we got to the headquarters, they let me make a phone call because we were just like driving around and they were meeting up with other ones and you know, them had me small talk, they was talking in code. They was up to some other shit, as a matter of fact. Me was just some like, they just got me and everything, but. So they had let me call my daughter's school. So I remember that I called my daughter's school and um, the principal picked up and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm um, what you call his dad? Can I talk to her real quick? And she's like, yeah. They were out like having little recess, playing around. So they put my daughter on the phone and I'm like, mommy. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, the police got me. She, so she screamed and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And she starts crying. I go, don't worry. She, and I tell her, look, they're going to take me over there by where grandma lives. And my daughter just starts screaming and crying and crying. And I told her, no, 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 don't cry. You a big girl. You don't cry. And, and then she's like, okay, okay. But she was still like, you could tell, she, you know, she's a little, she was a little girl. And I go, and then I told her, look, tell the principal that you want your mom to come pick you up. Don't tell the principal what happened, but just tell her that you want your mom to come pick you up. And on some real shit, that shit hurt me, like, like dead center in my heart, like. It was like they were ripping us apart, you know, and, and. Something I have to go through, you know? It's fucked up, but... 
so you know from right there they take me to their like headquarters I come that's where they fingerprint you and then they do the little paparazzi shit with all the fucking taking all the pictures for the news and then I guess that's what they did and then I made another call once I was at their at their headquarters they let me use somebody one of the one of the other guys cell phones and then um, he was just I called one of my boys I told him go lock the house because everything stayed open from there they take you to like the hospital then they take you to like Mexican immigration you sign some papers you know some bullshit I go there I see all kinds of like Asian fools a bunch of there was a, all the Haitians were there and you know there was just it was just like people from all over the place like a lot of people from Central America because they put me in these tanks shot the fuck out like piss all over the floor fools sleeping all over the floor like and they were like staying there, like every day they stay there. You know, me, I was just passing through. They're gonna be there for a minute, like until what their countries come and get them or, or something, I don't know. And then from there, then, then that's when they take you to like, they take you, they took me right there to the San Isidro port of entry and basically you walk this long walk with your, with your feet shackled, you know, around your waist and your and your wrist and you walk this long walk and they turn you over to like I guess it's Homeland Security, um, the Border Patrol, INS, ICE, like all that shit's right there. I think all that's one. And um, you know, I I get there and everything flips to English now. Ten four ten four. And I remember it was like some like some like black dude, and he's like, um, let me give me let me get your social security number, and um, man, I haven't, I didn't like I end up remembering it, you know, gave him my name, everything. They couldn't find me in the system, so they just you know, they turned me over to the U.S. So now, so now I sat there for about an hour. Then they put me in behind the wall now, on some bench for like another hour. And then some like old like like fucking racist dude, grouchy as fuck, checked the young one of the young cops in there or whatever to put me in the cell. So they put me in that cell. That was the first cell I touched. And and then like you know a little while after, like an hour and some change, LAPD showed up, like the fugitive task force, and they had told me that they had they had got the call when they were in Vegas and they had came from Vegas smashing. To pick me up So Dude walked up to me And was like What's up Conejo I just watched um, Your state gangster Riffic video And I'm like Alright cool Whatever And then um, They were like Just don't You know Don't give us no trouble And it'll be a smooth ride So basically They put you in these vans So it's the driver and then there's just like one, like a bucket seat, and you sit in that, like shackled to that, and then there's one all the way in the back. There's all, there's, it's all cleared out. There's no rows, and there's just one seat in the back, and he just like watches you. And I remember just like, like coming out of San Isidro and just like smashing all the way up the, all the way up the 805, back to the five, and then from the five, all the, all the 405, and um, just that whole way, just like being back in America in that way was just, I mean, you, you'd have to go through it to know how it feels like. And um, these fools are smashing. I remember we went through San Clemente and it was, it, the, the, they were out there checking cars. I remember we pulled up, they flashed their badges, flashlight us to like, go, 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 go. Cause it, I was in one van, but there was a vehicle in front of us and, a, and another van in back of us, like, escorting the one I was in. So they drove me all the way back to 77th Division Police Station in LA. You know, you know, you go through that whole, that the booking process. You know, I had came in, I was wearing, when they got me, I was wearing some like sandals, some sweats and a hoodie. You know, I was chilling, I was in my pad. And um, I came in like that, you know, so. And then I, I remember I jumped on the phone and 
and then like I guess by then the word had spread you know the word had spread everybody knew I was in custody I, I think it came out on the news yeah because the very next day it came out on the news everybody knew so so I got I had got a hold of my peoples and I just um you know they put me in a cell I was in a cell so basically you, I stayed there for three days and on the third day they take you to court and I was in that I was in that cell and like on the on the next day after that they tell me um hey we're gonna clean your cell we're gonna have to go put you in this other one and once they're done cleaning it we'll bring you back so I I come into this other cell and there's a dude in there and dude's like a straight he's a he's a tecato that fool got track marks all over his arms he's in there like he's wrapped up in his fucking like his like on some like sleeping bag type shit like straight that's how smokers look when they come in and um you know I was right there for a minute knocked out ate whatever the fuck and then I was trying to use the phone again so I was like standing by the door like trying to wave the cop down so they take me down there cause the phones were down there this shit 77th division looks like it looks like a real facility a real jail like tears and shit like that I remember this fool started asking me all these strange questions and I already knew because another one of some other homie that had was a fugitive for like 20 years had got snatched up and that shit had came back that that once he got to 70 as soon as he went in there they put in like you know it'll be a, like it's an informant but it'll be like a, a street person or something so 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 when I was in there, this they put this fool in there, and he started asking me like stupid ass questions. So I already knew I knew what time what time it was with him, you know. And you see, on top of that, you see the cameras right there watching everything you do. So I'm sure they're hearing everything you say. They're on you, you know. So this fool starts asking me about fools from my hood that are no good, that he fucks with them. But I never told him where I was from because I had a hoodie. I was covered up, you know? So I, I caught on to that, like, right away. Like, wait a minute. This fool's asking me and telling me about, about dudes that are no good for my hood, that used to be for my hood, and and that he fucks with them and that they're doing this and that they're doing that. But I, I never told him where I was from, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I was on to this fool. So... I, I remember I, I went to court that and when I went to court on that third day I, you go in there and you know they they basically tell you what the case is and it's and it's see this is for all them stupid motherfuckers and they're talking about that they only had me in there for fucking questioning how the fuck they gonna have me in there for some questioning as long as they had me I'm telling you motherfuckers will be on some stupid shit and another thing like they got me in there for questioning who the fuck goes to questioning and answers their questions? You don't even do that. Probably a bum ass motherfucker ain't got no fucking lawyer probably do that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or a fool, you don't know what time it is. He thinks he's gonna fucking say some shit that'll get him out of it right there, but that just goes to show you. And um, I went to court and then that's when they tell you like this is a special circumstances case. That means it's a death penalty case. And and I was just in that tank. It was cold as fuck, you know? After that, after court, we go we go to the LA County Jail for the processing. And you know, we're driving around downtown LA, so I mean it's just like a CCB court is just like around around the corner down the street from the LA County Jail. So I didn't go that far, you know, but you know, you, you, you still get to see all this shit. And then, and now like the county buses, they're, they're like covered up. So you gotta stand up and there's like a section like above that, that thing that blocks it, maybe about, it's maybe about um six, seven, eight inches where you could like look out to the street, you know? And see cars, see, you, you know, motherfuckers, see start banging on the window they see a female shit like that and then um so I'm in the county and um you know I'm just 
yeah, you know, I'm introducing myself and all that. And, and see, the thing is that I hadn't heard my real name in almost 15 years. And, and another thing, like, I, when I was out there, I was gone. I wasn't, like, introducing myself as Cunejo from Heartbeats. That, that, that'd be a stupid-ass move. You know what I'm saying? You never know who's who, who what. Like, maybe if this fool just tell this fool a little something, and before you know it, oh, I met that fool. That fool's right there. You know, so I, I didn't go around introducing myself as, as oh, I'm Conejo from Westside Harpies. Nah. You know, the whole time out there, I was just, I, you know, try to be low-key for his, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't give nobody no fucking eye contact. None of that shit. Because... Just like, okay, you know, they got dropouts and fools that snitch and them motherfuckers were getting deported too and they were out there and I and I, had, I already had heard a, about a gang of fools that they would give up fools to get their green card back. That feds were doing deals with fool, with motherfuckers like that all the time. So I already knew. You know, look, look at the fool that snitched on me. That's what he did. You know, he just, you know... He, giving up info see over there they they use snitching as a weapon they don't they don't look at it like so a fool be like you're you're in his way you're fucking with him he can't there's no way he could get you so he'll fucking um he'll snitch on you hit send the government over there government gets you out of the way so now you know he he he's basically eliminated you know a threat to him and that's like that's what the fool did to me So, like I said, you know, I'll be over there low key, you know what I'm saying, looking normal as fuck, no eye contact. I'll be on it, I'll be looking at every at everything, but you know, you know, somebody like when you look at somebody like that energy, like the other person will look back, you know, and 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 I'm telling you, right before I got cracked, it was hot as fuck out there, and it, and they that happened several times, you know, because there's been several wars over there, man. And it'll get so hot that over there the military's driving around, the state, the federal, the local, you know, they got like judiciales and ministeriales, which be like detectives, all these agencies running around. And you gotta like, just like, you know, you gotta strategize, you gotta like, you got, you know, you gotta move in silence and, and you gotta know when to do shit, you know? So, you know, now, now I'm in the county, like I said, hearing my real name after all these years and introducing myself as Conejo from Harpy's Dead End. So, you know, I, I be in, like, that shit spread quick. Like, everybody knew I was in the county jail. Like, as soon as I got there, like, I started getting, like, kites and fools were banging on the door from, from next door and... Like, fools who just wanted to get at me and shit. To tell the truth, I signed a bunch of autographs in the county jail. A bunch of them. I remember that first day that I pulled up to Supermax. Because I, I was in the county, like, floating around for, like, two, two or three days or something. And then I end up in um, Wayside at Supermax. And I'm walking through the dorm, just feeling tired. See, the thing is, when... when like me, I ain't really got no sleep in about 14, 15 years at that point. Yeah, sometimes you fall asleep because you fucking tired or or you fucked up or, or something, but but not no real sleep. And I remember right there, I, I slept for like three days. I just get up for chow and knock out. And, and I think the homies knew like that I was, I had just came, well, I had told them, you know, but they kind of knew like, man, this fool's just, you could tell he's been through some shit, you know. So, and then, um, and that's it. I just started, you know, being right there, going to court, going to court. My attorney started coming to see me. And, um, you know, we took it step by step. And, like, wherever was my bunkie, I, like, I look out and shit. Like, whatever I had, they had. You know, they needed whatever the fuck. I, you know, like, all, I kind of, like, chose all my bunkies, like, would eat every night on store night we would cook a major meal you know we'd be up chilling 
clowning, working out, everything. You know, my my girl, she was my she's my wife now, but my girl, she used to come visit me like every single weekend. Like she never I never had that problem, like fools all stressed the fuck out on the phone or where's where she I never had that problem. Like me and my girl used to talk every every single day on the phone. Like like we spent thousands of dollars just on the phone. Like, you know, and I think like that's where like I really like fell in love with her because you know, we just I don't know. So yeah, I was there and you know, I remember I used to get a lot of mail. More I used to get more mail than like probably like three or four dorms at times put together. Like I get a gang of mail every single day. Like everybody like was reaching out, everybody was concerned and everybody was putting on um, money on my books and I was like taken care of and then like a lot of peeps reached out to me, you know, like showing love and and I remember Young Dopey, when I first got there, Young Dopey was across the way from me. And they're like, yeah, Young Dopey's over there. But, you know, we was, he was doing his thing, I was doing mine, you know? But I'm sure if we would have ended up in the same dorm, we would have shared a rhyme with each other. When you're when you're on the run, yeah, you bu you fuck with homies and you bump into them, but they're, they're either... They're, you know, they're either on the same shit as you or they're not, so you don't fuck with them. So, and like I said before, I didn't go around like trying to be around like, nah, I was just like blending in. I was in the mix with paisas and all kinds of shit. I wasn't trying to be around like, you know what I'm saying? I was just being a Mexicano and that's it. You know, you gotta be in my shoes to, to really know what I'm talking about because there's a lot of homies out there that they be fugitives but they want to fuck him, look all banged out, bald head, all that shit, and they don't last. They don't last long at all. And if you wasn't doing what I was doing, then I, then I wasn't fucking with you. And so now I'm back in the LA County Jail, and I'm with all the homies. I'm the homies from like, from everywhere, like, just all the areas and shit. And I remember we were in there and shit, and and, and I would collect all the Bibles. So I have about like. For reals, I probably had like 60 to 70 to 80 Bibles, the blue ones. They give you the duffel bags to go to court. So I, I would fill them up, like real nice and square in there. And I would make my, that would be my curl. I could curl with that. So we would do circuit, circuit workout, you know, so it'd be like push-ups, squats, um, the bag, the other bag. Like we, you know, we we make sure we, you know, then we work on the core. We would do like circuit. So it was like we was doing fucking CrossFit in there. Like you do pull-ups, dips, push-ups. You know, squats, the bag. Everybody asking me questions and this, this and that, and then along comes another motherfucker, informant, and he, y el vato llega. Y poco poquito, like, it took him like a day or two, like, to get friendly and bring shit up and this, this, and that. Then motherfucker starts telling me about, like, high-impact crimes and shit that he be doing. So I'm, I, I hear him out, whatever, whatever. Then I get, you know, starts telling me about more shit and more shit and more shit and more shit. And then I'm like, all right, I know what this dude's trying to do. This dude's trying to get me... He's telling me all this shit because he wants me to open up and tell him some G shit. And, and I wouldn't. You know, I talk about bitches. I talk about just like how like how being in Mexico was dope, that it was a different lifestyle and shit. And it wouldn't work. I'd be on the phone, fool jump on the phone right next to me and act like he's talking on the phone. But he wasn't because he never like punched nothing in, no nothing. He'll be talking about, you know, Allegedly talking to his girl Telling her to, to hide this And hide that And I'd be like Why is this fool saying this over the phone You know So I, I was on to him And after a little while Like He You know He He like He noticed it Like Oh this fool He And then like The thing is that one time He tried to bring up some shit about Mexico About TJ About Playas About You know That some shit had happened He told me how it went down and right there I knew that fool was lying. He was lying. And right there's where I was like, nah, I'm done with this fool. I, I, try, I was trying to shake him for a minute, you know? But he'd just be on me. But I think right there he knew like, damn, 
this fool caught me in a lie. Now he really knows if he really was, you know, now, you know, because you never know in there. And whatever. So I was in there for a while. My attorney, I was coming see me and, and you know, I didn't, I didn't really write no raps while I was there. I had like, I wrote like one or two, but not really until like them last three or four months I went off. I wrote like 300 songs. I was just writing all day, all night. And, and right there, there was uncertainty. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I just, I felt like writing. So I started writing. 